gets it, take this! Hey! Which one are we looking at here? Demo Disc 51 for the official US PlayStation Magazine is a PlayStation 2 demo disc. A little bit scattershot still as to which ones I have access to. But I'm, I'm slowly locating them. So they're coming out not quite in the order that I wanted them to be in. I wanted to have all of these demo discs come out in the order that they were released, but I almost immediately failed at that. <laughs> or I did immediately fail at that. No, just a journalist on the run from her evil producer. Touchy. Well, if you're done with your little holographic game of hide and seek, why don't you tell the viewers what's in this issue? No problem. Hey, gang, in this issue, check out Eco. We got the lowdown from the developers in Japan. Yeah. Then I flew over to Naughty Dog to hang out with the creators of Jack and Daxter. For those of you who thought the 360 camera we used at E3 in our last issue was cool, the folks at Enroute showed us how they're using it to give you a head spinning look at things. Head spinning, huh? It's kind of like a, an exorcist camp. Uh, you know, with the head spinning. And... Begin simulation. Now, where did I leave that laser? They didn't do this for very long. I mean, they created this Maggie character to sort of be a bit of a mascot for the PlayStation Underground. I don't know she lasted that long. Kinetica. Racing game. I figure it to be something along the lines of a wipeout kind of thing. We have a sci-fi course. Your characters, your racers don't float like the wipeout racers, but the courses feel similar. And, you know, it's been a long time since I played this, so I can't say for sure whether I, uh... Let's just get into it. Know how to place. <laughs> I remember thinking it was wipeout like. Ah, uh, yeah, it's fairly wipey, wipeouty. That's a much bigger racer than the rest of us. That feels fair. Ah. <laughs> It's an interesting gimmick with the way that the um, character designs and all that kind of stuff, where they have wheels in their hands and their feet. I'd say, though, if this... If you didn't have Wipeout or, say, even F-Zero, or perhaps even Jet Moto before this, this would have been a much more of an influential game. I don't really think anybody's really talking about Kinetica anymore. Whereas... F-Zero, people jerk themselves off to that quite a bit. Even uh, Jet Moto has some fans still. And um, Wipeout, that's... That, I think, is the uh, the game series that, of this type that people mostly, like, latched onto. The F-Zero guys are more uh, just diehard Nintendo fans who... They'll play the Nintendo obsessed with it because it's a Nintendo series. I never really liked F-Zero. To be fair though, the only one I really have a lot of experience with was uh, the first F-Zero. By the time I got a chance to play it, I had, um, I had already played like Mario Kart, which was a slower paced game, but I thought was better. So the kind of Mode 7 gimmick of it was not, um, it didn't really hit me the way I guess it should have, or it was supposed to. Am I losing? <laughs> I'm position 4 of 12. I don't see any other racers.
Oh! So awkward the way I slam up against the walls there. I must be doing it wrong. Oh, it moved. <laughs> I'm still positioned 4 of 12. After all that, you think I would have gained a spot. Oh, they're way ahead of me. I just noticed a thing on the left side. I'm not that far ahead of whoever's behind me, but I'm way behind number three. What is this? Ah, get straight, girl. Ah, there we go. There's definitely a different era where this character's shamelessly sticking her ass out. Definitely don't see that kind of thing nowadays. Uh, I at least need to be number four. <laughs> you can definitely tell that they're really trying to exercise the boost in power that the PlayStation 2 offered because there aren't any, like, sharp turns here. Everything bends so they have more rounded, rounded environments. Well, here's some sharp bends, but... Oh, too soon, huh? <laughs> of course, the, the more rounded you try to make something in the environment or character model or anything, the more processing performance you need to dump into it. Because you need more vertices and lines and all that kind of stuff. So PlayStation 1 wasn't really that well suited for that kind of thing. It was an older machine. PS2... They put a lot of effort into increasing, like, the ability to push higher resolution geometry. Uh, vector processors being integrated in the CPU and all of that. Hey, I can do tricks. Straighten out. Oh, did I get points for that? I don't know how this works. Oh, shit. She's gonna die. Oh. And now I'm position seven. <laughs> In fact, we're in a completely, like, round, like, tube here. Not to say you didn't see any sort of bends in PlayStation 1 games, like Gran Turismo or Driver 2. Even Wipeout, to an extent, had it. But, like, there was no ceiling in Wipeout. Or at least it, it wasn't to this extent. All right, that was Connecticut. Bit of a forgettable game. I'm sure it's got fans out there, but I don't know if there are any sequels to it. So it's just one of the many, many PlayStation franchises, essentially, uh, series or whatever. Not really a series if there's only one. But... PlayStation IPs that were created and then died over the... Alright, I'm gonna use save states because this takes forever. This loading takes forever. Oh, I'm not... At... Okay, Kinetica. Extermination. Is this a video or is this a demo? It's a demo! Oh! Extermination. It's a survival horror game. Oh, wow, it's got some graphical glitching. <laughs> this is a survival horror game, and I think it was the first survival horror game sort of unveiled for the PlayStation 2. And I don't know about everybody else, but I was excited for it. Because, I mean, I'd played Resident Evil, and I'd played uh, Silent Hill, and I'd played... I don't know, some whatever, whatever other shit there was. And, like, imagine that for the PS2. But then, you know, the game ended up coming out. And I made sure to get it. I rented it, and then eventually I ended up buying it. Just because I saw it, like, for sale, for a budget price. But I was, I was kind of disappointed with it. It doesn't play very well. There's no, uh... 
this video, this demo is glitching. Dennis here. This is Roger. Where are you? Look up. There's a ventilation shed. Dude, you're right over him. Should lead into the compound. You need to get up here. Come on. This icy cliff looks impossible. You'll have to find a way around it. Just follow my directions. First, God, the voice acting is a disaster. This game is... Okay. Um... Oh, the battery mechanic. Oh, okay, this game, it's coming back to me. It's one of those games that... Like, I played it, honestly, I played it a bunch of times. But, I'm... Because uh, back in the early PlayStation 2 days, I didn't have a lot of money to buy games, so... If I got a game, I played it a lot. So I played Extermination a bunch of times. The fact that I was able to get it for a budget should have been an indication of how good of a game it was. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it wasn't terrible for its day. I mean, remember, this was... It was during an era when developers were still trying to figure out 3D games. So, just because it was a PlayStation 2 and... Sony had been doing 3D since PS1. This, it took more time than that to. Oh shit! It took more time than that for them to really figure it out. So even though there's dual analog control by default, essentially, with every console. Okay, take it, take it. Okay, whatever. There was no. There isn't, like, the modern-day concept of 3D control, where you have the dual analog stick control, left moves character, right moves camera. You don't have any of that here. It's The camera is just trying to track behind the character. And it feels awkward from a modern context. And if I remember correctly, it's, uh... It's a bit difficult to play in some aspect areas where they want you to do, like, platforming, or to activate... From there. Ugh, shut up. Activate things like you gotta shuffle around in front of items like you're playing Tomb Raider oh fuck this looks dangerous ah oh he survived should have broken his ankles or something there but oh okay R1 centers the camera behind him he says that that's an old uh... that's an older thing that you see in some games I think it was a game that maybe... Oh, okay, I'll tell you, aim your gun. I think the extermination was... A... Um, it was designed during... Like, unveiled and stuff before the PlayStation 2 launched. But maybe it ran in developmental troubles. Because I don't think it released at launch. I think it got held up for a little while, and by the time it actually released, maybe people didn't care. Like, because survival horror on the PS2, I mean, you've got some tough competition on that. You've got Silent Hill 2 and 3 and 4 even. Silent Hill 2 maybe came about... Uh, definitely Silent Hill 2 was at least unveiled by the time this game released. So you're looking at this like, oh crap, it looks like shit compared to Silent Hill. To jump that crevice. Yeah, the crevasse. How do I jump? Oh, it's X. <laughs> you jump with X. No choice but to jump this one. Yeah, great, great. This the ventilation shaft? While I was what the waiting, fuck do you think it is, idiot? Fan works. It spins for three seconds and stops for two seconds. But with the inertia, it's only clear for one second. Timing needs to be perfect. Why is it doing that? You'd better go ahead. Me first, huh? I'll go once you're safely in. If I see you can survive you it, I'll go. Stuff, aren't you? All right. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. You sure this is the right way? Plus, I mean, like, if you look at sort of action games that 
were shown off, if not released, by the time Extermination came out. Things that... Like, Metal Gear Solid 2. Metal Gear Solid 2 was at very least shown off. And of course, it's a different genre of game. But the technology behind it could easily, like, if... Perhaps if the development studio were a little bit more talented or a little bit more experienced with the hardware... This game could have looked better, could have controlled better. Oh shit. Um, stories in survival horror games tend not to be all that great. It tends to be just like, oh, uh, monster, we're stuck somewhere, monsters, kill monsters, survive, escape. Then you can add some other stuff in there like, oh, um, somebody betrays you, all that kind of stuff. But they tend not to be all that much. Dennis. Dennis our hero, Dennis. <laughs> I forget, I should have listened to him. I don't know what the fuck to do. Do you know I have to go through that door? And I need to activate some stuff somewhere? But I'm... Uh, what do we have here? Oh. This game has got some kind of... Um, infection mechanic like so it's not just health they have to worry about you have to worry about um, your character getting infected so you use certain items to cure the infection and then you also have to cure their injury all right is this it Get in that hole. There we go. Something better start trying to kill me soon. Call me crazy, though. I think for a survival horror game, I think this character... What they call him? Dennis? Dennis is actually a little bit too capable of a fighter. I think survival horror is kind of at its best when your character doesn't feel like he's strong enough to be in control of everything. Alright, so this didn't take me where I needed to go. <laughs> I could have sworn that was going to be it. I remember a vent you had to crawl through into another room. Maybe there's another... Vent. Oh, there's a door. <laughs> but the way that this game works, there's... Um, you don't have infinite ammo, like proper infinite ammo. But what you do have are these... Um, you have these ammo boxes you run across which you will always be able to just sort of pull more ammunition out of. As opposed to, um, like a Resident Evil style, where there's a limited amount of ammunition in the world. So, I mean, I'm not going to waste ammo now, because I haven't run into one of those. Let me just take another Ganders in here. You effectively have infinite ammunition because you can always replenish as long as you can find your way to one of the ammo boxes and your character is there's got to be a way through this no damn it all right i don't know what i'm doing i'm gonna give up soon actually <laughs> but with this assault rifle you have and all the crap you can equip onto it and all that kind of stuff i feel like this character is just a touch too powerful to make for a good survival horror game. So, to compensate for your character being too powerful, they go and they... increase the number of enemies that are around, so it turns into more of an action game. And you kind of need your character to feel vulnerable for a survival horror game, not an action game. The two are just sort of like incongruent. Alright, I'm actually going to give up soon if I can't get through this door. 
I didn't do anything to unlock it, but maybe there's some weird bullshit. No, it's still red. Ah, damn it. What do I do? Ah, screw it. Gallop Racers 2001. God, I hope this is just a video. Damn it. <laughs> There's anything I don't like, I don't care for in the world, it's horse racing. I mean, it's... I've been to the racetrack a few times, placed bets and all that kind of stuff. Unless you have money on it. Unless you have money on it. And really, it's just the money that you're interested in. I see no entertainment in it. God, I hope this is... I didn't read the instructions. This is going to be one of those damn ones where you got to tap the X button to race. It's probably it, isn't it? Navigator. What the fuck you need a navigator for? It's a racetrack. It's a circle. Shit, that's a lot of people for a racetrack. Ready? Uh... I didn't read the instructions, so I might be doing this wrong. I'm just tapping the X button. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, do I have to... ...maintain stamina? Is what it is. Alright. You know, why are we... ...racing on grass? Not the way the racetracks I've seen... ...looked. Oh, I don't even need to tap the button. What the fuck am I supposed to be doing here? I think I'm winning. Oh, no, I'm in position four. <laughs> I'm out of stamina, though, so what am I supposed to... No, I'm in position one. Yeah! The fucker's behind me. Did I win? <laughs> So exciting. I don't know if I won or not. I think I lost. <laughs> number ten. Was I number ten? I don't I don't fucking know. Oh I, I finished number three. Fantastic. I didn't win any money. Hmm. Even if I won the race, I wouldn't win any money, so <laughs> jumping out. NBA Street. I don't remember... Well, I remember this game existing. I don't remember there being a demo of it, though. Kind of takes the whole NBA thing out of it if you're playing a street ball game, isn't it? Maybe there are NBA players in it. I mean, you got to look at this as being kind of a an easy enough investment for a company. Because, I mean, okay, so you get the NBA license, and you have a EA license for all these teams. So, EA. You already get your game engine running, all this other kind of stuff. It's not that hard to roll it over into a smaller title like this. Yes, yes, fuck, whatever. Just look, just do this. <laughs> Say more or less just roll the same building blocks of the game into this smaller title and you can go and uh should have read some of that. Let's start by learning how to pass the ball. Yeah. Fuck. Ah oh, shit. I'm in a training session here. I'm gonna call that a win. It actually asked me if I wanted to uh do the tutorial though. I should have said no. Far fucking away. Really? 
I'll get it eventually. God, I hope the actual game isn't this easy. What the fuck's happening? Where are you going? Dude, pay attention! My god, why? Swiping his ass. Ah, got it. Fouled him, though. <laughs> yeah, just... What was I doing? I didn't read the instructions. I don't know how to pump fake. Ah, uh, okay. Quickly tap circle. That's what I was doing. The instructions are bullshit. <laughs> Doesn't work. I quickly tap the circle button and just freaking shoots. Move the ball to the player. Move the ball to a player in shooting position. No, damn it, that was shooting. Alright, alright, done. <laughs> Formula One, 2001. That would almost rhyme if not for the fact that one and one are the same word. Come on. Oh, it's a video. I'm trying to jump through it. Racing games did look surprisingly good. Some racing games, anyway. Looked surprisingly good on the PlayStation 1. So, of course, PS2 was going to be the... Um, everyone was waiting to see what PS2 racing games would look like. I think there was a Ridge Racer game that came out for it. And there may have been, fairly early, a small... Smaller Gran Turismo release. Like a $20 kind of release, not a full game. Racing games have always ended up looking good on... Some racing games, anyway, have always ended up looking good on whatever console generation they're in. I mean, look at um, the last PS3 uh, Gran Turismo game, or... Like, Forza Horizon. Or something like that. Of course, there are like the, um, the more arcadey racers, which may not have as much of a realistic art style. I guess maybe it might be down to the fact that a well, nice damage yeah, uh, model that you don't have characters, so you don't have like a person to look at and pick apart what the model looks like. Final Fantasy X has got to be a video. There have been other worlds. That's not before. ten. That's nine. Mythical. Yeah, we're still Exciting. looking at nine. Timeless. Final Fantasy the game. Okay, seven. Eight. Interactive worlds that have captivated millions. Take Eight still. The limits of your imagination. Nine. All of the above. <laughs> ten. And now the phenomenon continues. I'm surprised on how kind of retrospectively people look back at Final Fantasy X with a bit of a level of disgust. And I get like people aren't gonna like the main character here. He's a whiner. And like the you, it seems like in a lot of cases the people who are fans of this series tend to think of whichever first one they played was the best. 
So being in, from the United States, the Final Fantasy series didn't become popular over here until Final Fantasy VII. But it had some level of success with Final Fantasy VI, or they called it three over here. And a number of the other Final Fantasy games before then never saw release in the United States. So, more or less, you end up having two camps, really. A lot of them that say Final Fantasy VII was the best, a lot of them say VI was the best. And there's a few that look at nine, And nine being sort of built as something of a throwback to the earlier games in the series with those more high fantasy... Um, environments and character models and stuff like that but then you get the 10 and the 10 jumped to the ps2 and it was we were all excited for this one as well because it was like man what are they gonna manage to do because it, it was success after success and the game ended up being different than i expected it to uh the lack of an overworld was a little bit of a disappointment uh to me but i mean the it wasn't bad what they did do having the environments to sort of go into each other. And for the most part, I thought the characters were all pretty good and the story was all right. I just, uh, a lot of people give it shit for its voice acting. And its voice acting isn't really that bad. But I keep seeing videos and people commenting over and over again about the damn scene when they're laughing. The Titus and Yuna are laughing and it sounds terrible. And you know why it sounds terrible? It was intentionally terrible because they were faking laughter. Why do you not understand this? If you think that that fucking laughing scene is an example of how bad the voice acting is in this game, you're not nearly as smart as you think you are. Because it's really fucking obvious that they are fake laughing. Anyway, rant over. Moving on. Uh, Blood Omen 2. Uh, not the second game in... The Legacy of Kane series. It's actually the fourth released game. One that I think doesn't really get as much praise as the rest of the games in the series. It kind of like fucked up the series continuity a little bit too because it took place between the events of um, Legacy of Kane Blood Omen, the first game in the series, and Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver, which was actually the second game in the series. And it set up this idea that Cain went on this... The Cain being the protagonist from the first game, went on this... Um, built his vampire army up and went on this crusade. And then was defeated, and then he goes through all this other stuff to fight against a race of monsters called the Hilden, blah 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 blah. What it ended up screwing up in the continuity of the series, though, was the whole vampire army that we're looking at right now. Because, as established in Soul Reaver, which took place after this, Cain didn't... Uh, he, his vampire army didn't arise until much later. And you had, like, Raziel and Dumas and all those were, were the, pro, his progeny. In this case, though, like, how does this fit into the timeline? So then you had um, the Soul Reaver series and Defiance and all that basically spent the remainder of the series run trying to conform itself to this game here. So from that perspective, I get why people don't like it. Gameplay-wise, I think... Yeah, um, it probably had the best combat system of the 3D Kane titles, although it was a little bit simplistic. The character also doesn't monologue a lot, the way he does in the other games. And the he just doesn't really lace everything up with as much pretentious speech as he does in the other games. So it kind of doesn't feel like a Legacy of Kane game in some respects. But it's not bad. In fact, I would say that Strangely enough, as this is to say, its greatest asset, Blood Omen 2, I mean, its greatest asset is the fact that it is exactly as long as it should be. <laughs> I remember thinking that when I first played it back 20 years ago. And thinking of it when I played it again as a... Um, when I played it again 
for this channel, when I did an LP for it for this channel, that I reached the end and went, you know what? If that game lasted another 10 minutes, I'd get bored of it. It lasted exactly as long as it should. Somehow they managed to figure that out, and something that I wish more developers understood. Uh, what was this? Um, what strike are we on? Uh, the Vault. Uh, Thunderstrike. I'm guessing this is a member of the, like, Desert Strike and Jungle Strike games. Because, I mean, you know, the word strike is in the title, and we have attack helicopters. I'd seen these on the PlayStation, or, I'm well, not the PlayStation, uh, the SNES and the Sega Genesis, back in that generation. And you had your helicopter flying around, blowing shit up, rescuing POWs, all that kind of stuff. Not a huge fan of it, but, you know, it was, was what it was. Another game series that I just completely lost track of. I guess Jungle Strike may have been a PlayStation 1 game, although I'll, I damn sure never played it. This one, I did not remember existed. Flight Sims, at least from the PlayStation 2 era forward, really started to look good. I mean, there were some PlayStation 1 era Flight Sims, and plus like the N64, you had like Pilot Wings, which are much more cartoony art style. So I'm not really counting that. But in the PlayStation 2 era is when I think you started to see flight sims, really graphically at least, come into their own. Although this game, I don't think, really does that. <laughs> Remember being um, excited for a game called Dropship, which was a PlayStation 2 flight sim that I never ended up playing. I should look into that. Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy. Oh, man. The perfect evolution of the action platformer genre. So this was Jack and Daxter. These were um, these were the successors to Crash Bandicoot. So Crash Bandicoot was created by Naughty Dog, but thanks to the fact that they were published by I think Universal, Universal maintained the copyright for it. So they didn't have the IP. And Naughty Dog didn't have the IP. So. Plus, I mean, when they went to start creating a new genre, and Sony may have owned them, Naughty Dog, by this point. They couldn't use Crash, and they were probably bored working on Crash game after Crash game after Crash game. So these were the new characters. This, um, Ratchet and Clank. As well, which was done by uh, Insomniac, which worked surprisingly close with Naughty Dog in this era, despite the fact that they were different studios and owned by different publishers. <laughs> they're all, they're both owned by Sony now, but weren't at the time. As well as uh, Sly Cooper. I think these games here were like the pinnacle of the 3D platform during this generation. And as much as people like uh, Nintendo definitely owned that. I mean, uh, on PlayStation you had like uh, Tomb Raider and Croc and all that kind of stuff. And there were different kinds of games compared to, say, Mario 64. But it's a little difficult to look at those games compared to the Mario 64 and say that Mario 64 is anything other than, uh, as well as, uh, what is that, Banjo-Kazooie. Maybe even that stupid squirrel one, foul mouth squirrel game, um, Conquer. It's difficult to look at what the PlayStation was doing and say the N64 wasn't better. But when you get to the PlayStation 2 era, and Sony isn't held back by its lack of an analog stick by default, as well as um, the more advanced technology that were able, they were able to use to build their levels and all that kind of stuff, definitely looking at the best example of 3D platformers. I mean, this kicks the shit out of Mario 64, or Mario Sunshine, or any of those. And I think maybe it wasn't... Maybe Jack and Daxter doesn't have that kind of uh, cachet with the audience as much as Ratchet and Clank might. 
But I don't think that's uh, an opinion that a lot of people are going to agree with me because there is this kind of um, industry-wide filleting of everything Nintendo does. So you get something like Mario Sunshine, which I thought was not a terribly good game. I mean, it wasn't bad by any means, but it wasn't like the groundbreaking game that Mario 64 was. And I don't think it met the standard of like Jack and Daxter or Ratchet and Clank or Sly Cooper. Moving on. Connecticut. Okay, we're back to where we began. How long has this video been? 40 minutes. Okay, so it'll be another one where I'm splitting this video in half. So, there we go. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you with part two.